Hi everyone, it's Ramon Khan from RMK Six Sigma bringing you another episode where I go through a worked example from my book Six Sigma Statistics using Minitab 17. Okay, so even if you don't own the book, you can still download the data set we're going to be going through uh, from my website rmk6sigma.com. If you like what you see, please hit the thumbs up or subscribe. In this video we're going to be doing an example on process capability but before we go into that I'm just going to go through some of the terms used in process capability so we all have the same level of understanding when we start. So I've put there process capability equals PP and that equals the voice of the customer divided by voice of the process. Okay so for process capability you might have seen CP and CPK uh, as the terms used for process capability but I believe we should be using the uh, term for the overall process capability to start off with which is PPK so let's learn it right from the start and we're going to be looking at continuous data and we're also going to be looking at the uh, examples when the underlying data is normally distributed okay so let's have a look at what uh, VOC and VOP actually how they break down so the VOC, voice of the customer, is expressed by the spec limits used by the customer. So the width of the spec limits is the upper spec limit minus the lower spec limit. And the voice of the process is the actual process width of the parameter that you're concerned with. So for a, we've previously learned that uh, six standard deviations contains 99.73% of the data. So we use that as the process width. So PP equals voice of the customer divided by voice of the process. So let's try and take an actual example now. And here we've got some data and it has a normal curve fitted to it. And I believe the data mean is around 210. Oh, actually, it says it on the graph, 210. The lower spec limit is 200 in this process and the upper spec limit is 220. So if I do that quick calculation again of voice of the process, so upper spec limit minus lower spec limit, equals 220 minus 200 which is 20 and that's divided by 6 times the standard deviation of the process which in this case is 3 so nice easy numbers 20 divided by 18 so my process capability PP equals 1.11 okay so a quick mathematical analysis here will tell you that if the PP is equals 1 then your process just about fits within your spec limits okay if your PP is greater than one your process fits within your spec limits and you shouldn't be making uh, defects if your PP is less than one then your process doesn't fit within the spec limits and you're making defects okay there's some other terminology we should know as well to do with uh, Z scores so let's have a quick look at that now so looking at the same process we have an equation there for the Z score. So the Z score equals the distance between the mean to the upper spec limit divided by the standard deviation. So it's that distance, uh, spec limit to mean, uh, expressed in terms of standard deviations, in length of standard deviations. That's the Z score. Then we also have the Z bench, which you'll see as well. And if we take all of our defects and put them under one side of the curve, the Z bench score is the distance expressed in terms of standard deviations from the mean uh, to that line which intersects with the number of defects that we've made. Okay, so we're going to change this scenario slightly. Before we had a distribution that was nicely centered within the spec limits. And we're going to still have the same distribution, but we're going to move it off center. So now the process mean is at 215, whereas before it used to be at 210. So we can say we had a machine before and we were looking at that process and someone came and knocked the machine and sent off the process mean by five units. So everything has moved along five units. The process width is still exactly the same. The data is the same, but it's, everything is shifted by five. So we see the same normal curve. The customer still wants the same spec limits, so there's still a lower spec limit of 200 and an upper spec limit of 220. So let's calculate our PP value, and we still get a PP value of 1.11 because everything's still the same. The spec limits are the same, and the standard deviation is the same. So this doesn't really tell us that we're making quite a lot of outer spec parts. So we want to know we're doing when we are doing that when we do capability calculations so PP isn't really appropriate for off-center distributions we need a slightly different measure 
and what we do we take we change the name to PPK now for process capability and what we do we look at the distance to the nearest spec limit from the mean so it's either X bar minus the lower spec limit divided by half of the um, process width so three standard deviations or the upper spec limit divided by three standard deviations and we take whichever is lower so we then use that to calculate process capability let's have a look at how the maths works out <clears throat> and this time we get a process capability value of 0.556 which is much lower than what we had before okay so if I only had the PP value and the PPK value and I knew the PP value was greater than one I would know that my distribution can fit within within my spec limits and then if I saw my PPK value was less than one without looking at the distribution and the spec limits graphically I would know that that process is off-centered so these numbers can come in quite useful when you compare the two um, but if you see a PPK value less than one you know that your process is making off spec parts and for the last section of this video I said we're going to look at overall and within capability so I said before overall overall capability we use PPK and within process capability we use the symbol CPK so just to explain the differences I've made up some process data and shown it in a time series plot so here's my process data and I can work out the overall standard deviation for that data as 3.28 now if I work out my process capability PPK for that data um, forget the voice of the customer at the top let's just say that's going to be the same and just look at the voice of the process so we have 3 times 3.28 that the denominator there is going to be close to 10 for the PPK now using the very same data if I break up my data into subgroups of five as I've done there, all nicely shown for you in the same time series plot now remember this is the same data my within standard deviation value is one so what I've done is as I've because I've broken it up into subgroups my special cause variation doesn't appear within the group it appears between groups and my within standard deviation is relatively low uh, that's the average for all the groups so I get a value of 1 now if I calculate my process capability this time CPK the denominator uh, for the process capability becomes 3 times 1 because I'm using now the within standard deviation so you can see for the same data the overall capability in the previous case the denominator was 10 but now it becomes 3 so over a factor of 3 difference so the PPK would be over 3 times higher than the PPK <coughs> using the same data just changing whether I'm using within metrics or overall metrics so if we had actually had a special cause variation CPK will always be greater than PPK and in fact then if you had special cause variation the CPK value is aspirational because you have to remove the special cause variation before you're entitled to that value of CPK but even if you don't have special cause variation usually the CPK or mostly the CPK is uh, greater than PPK let's have a look at those fitted curves for the same data as well and you can see for the overall uh, value the fitted normal curve is very wide whereas the curve for the within data is very narrow hence I would always say to you if someone is reporting capability to you and you're coming out with a good number always check they're telling you that it's the overall capability and not the within capability that they're reporting okay let's have a look at our process capability example question this time we're taking exercise 10.12.1 and you can download the data set if you want to work along with this as well from rmk6sigma.com so the scenario is data is taken from a process in time order with a subgroup size of 7 use the assistant to calculate capability metrics using the complete analysis for continuous data 
The lower spec limit is 87, the upper spec limit from the customer is 97, and the target for the process mean is 92. So we asked four other questions as well. So question one, is the process stable and is it normally distributed? How capable is the process? Question three, is the process breaching either spec limit? And question four, is the process aligned between the spec limits? So I've already downloaded the data into Minitab and here it is. And capability analysis is very easy to perform if you've aligned your data in the correct way. So here we've got the data in one column and I have the subgroup uh, identifier in the other column. And that's all I need for continuous data. So I click on Assistant and find Capability Analysis. Click on the Capability Analysis for continuous data. OK, now what type of Capability Analysis do I want? I want the Complete Analysis, whereas Snapshot doesn't do any of the within metrics. But I want the complete because my data is in time order. How is your data arranged? Well, mine's in columns. I need to tell it the column. It's in the column called data. Now, I've got two ways of telling it what the subgroup size is because it's constant. I can either put in seven or I can put in the identifiers in, in the column. So I'll do the second method and tell it where the identifiers are for the subgroups. Now I just need to enter my lower spec limit and upper spec limit. 87 and 97 respectively and we want to see if the mean of the process is at the target of 92 which is between the spec limits okay click OK to produce the reports and as normal we start on the summary report okay so we're given a question there how capable is the process and we're given our Z scores so we've got the actual and potential score which is the overall and the within scores okay then we're asked the question does the process mean differ from 92 um, so there isn't enough evidence to say that the process mean is different to 92 so we say no then we can actually see a histogram of the process with the fitted curve for overall capability we see that the actual data um, breaches the spec limits, the upper and the lower spec limits. And on this page, on under process characterization, we're given the PP score and the PK score. So the PP and the PK score are both less than one, meaning that the distribution does not fit within the spec limits. And because they're close together, we know that the distribution is centered as well. Okay, percentage out to spec, we get 1.11% out of spec. Let's have a look at the uh, next page on the report, which will be the diagnostics. So we get one point which is out of control, so we know we've got a bit of special cause variation. And we see that our data can be said to come from a normally distributed population with a p-value of 0.96. So we know we're using the right kind of analysis, capability analysis, for normal data. Now we're looking at the process performance report and in this report the within metrics are also uh, overlaid on the data. Okay, so we have our fit for actual overall and potential within shown on the histogram and we've seen the histogram before. Then we get our CP metrics for within and our PP metrics. You'll see that they are identical, the CPK and the PPK, meaning that the uh, subgrouping and the calculation of the within group standard deviation has had virtually no effect. This is a pretty rare occurrence, really. Um, well, it's quite interesting to see. And finally, let's have a look at our report card. And we're just given one warning on stability. We're just going back to our report. So here, if we were to improve this process, it's already centered. We wouldn't focus on that. We'd want to focus on the process width and the actual standard deviation of the process to bring it in within the spec limits, assuming the spec limits were fixed. OK, I hope you got a lot out of learning how to do capability analysis using the assistant. And if you need any more information, please have a look at the website or buy the book Six Sigma Statistics using Minitab 17. Thank you very much. See you next time. Mm -hmm.